Hello, everyone. Uh, today's lecture uh, covers the so-called RMS prop. The RMS prop was expired by the adder, adder <coughs> gradient. Uh, it's using a, a momentum with all we call this uh, 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 accumulated state vectors, uh, S. The S right here <coughs> in the adder grade the S is uh, updated in the form of uh, ST equals to ST minus 1 plus the gradient of a square. And this method has some issues. And this issue is uh, since ST is star with a 0 or star with a positive number, and then the ST, uh, gradient square is always uh, positive or non-negative. In this case, the uh, ST can be uh, increasing uh, up to uh, infinity. So it's continuously increasing, and it could cause some ear conditions uh, in the calculation. And one of the ways to fix this is ST, we're using ST divided by uh, number of iteration or number of epochal. Uh, so ST divided by T is one of the normalized method to scale the S, uh, this momentum vectors back to uh, a little bit moderate measure. And using these type of uh, uh, simplified uh, normalization, it still didn't improve the uh, convergences for Adagray. So this uh, RMS is prob is basically <clears throat> using a similar situation using a exponential smooth uh, vectors is uh, st equals to gamma times st minus 1 and plus 1 minus gamma times uh, <clears throat> the square of a gradient. So the gamma is uh, strictly gr uh, greater than 0 and it, it is uh, uh, using as an exponential smoothing factor. Uh, so we can formally present, as we already talked about it in the uh, chapter 8 of the textbooks, and then we start talking about here, repeat uh, this algorithm. The algorithm is update the momentum vector or stay vector ST uh, using an exponentially smooth uh, uh, <coughs> of GT squared. Okay, um, then we're using a uh, so-called RMS as a root square, uh, root mean squares, in the bottom. Okay, and nu is also a, a small uh, positive number, and scaled by the gradient as well. <clears throat> so we're using this as this portion as a uh, step size to watch the gradient. This update turns out to be using uh, equation 1, update this uh, momentum equals to 1 minus gamma times uh, gt squared plus gamma times st minus 1. And that we can continue explore the x gamma times xt, then it becomes uh, so gamma squared uh, <coughs> square square times gt squared, and so on and so forth. So this becomes a series of a 1 minus gamma plus gamma squared plus and so on and so forth, all the way up to gt1. So the initial gradient, basically. And this series is, we can simplify it, actually, if uh, number of term t equals to infinity, then this term is approaching to 1 over 1 minus gamma. OK. <clears throat> so this can be used to normalize the uh, our step size and our current gradient uh, using this term. So we're going to show you how to, uh, to plot this uh, using different gamma, and we'll see what kind of smooth factor it is lo looking at. So here I have a several tribe. Gamma equals to point, uh, point 0.95, gamma equals to nine, uh, point 0.9, gamma equals to point 
and gamma equals to uh, 0.7. And I loop forward, so for each one of those, calculating uh, so-called 1 minus gamma times gamma times x squared. So basically is this function, st, okay, over time. So here what we have, we create a set of x, okay, using uh, 40 data point, 40 time period, or epochs, and then we're plotting for gamma equals to different value, what kind of uh, smoothing it creates, or decay, exponential decays is. So gamma equals to 0.7 is uh, most interesting, almost like the red line. Gamma equals to 0.8 is the green line. Gamma equals to 0.9 is the orange line. And gamma equals to 0.95 is kind of flat, but it's equals to uh, gamma equals to 0.95. <coughs> okay, was this to see the how the exponential decay uh, of this equation, we have equation one, we have, or the equation two, how the uh, <coughs> uh, momentum got uh, normalized over time. We are ready to do the so-called implementation and show you example how to solve this uses the RMS prompt. Uh, first, again, we're using the Rosenberg function, and here I have, you can using other function as well. And the de derivative, first derivative of the Rosenberg function <coughs> over here. I'm going to using a three, uh, again, we present a 3D plot for the Rosenberg function. Next, we <coughs> uh, show you using the same gradient descent algorithm framework. I'm using the RMS PROM update right here for this uh, particular routine. The routine structure exactly the same, two double for loop and uh, using the calculator gradient and then using the gradient plus a update of a momentum. So here we're trying to see is, uh, of course, in if initially for the uh, gradient descent, we're just using the derivative. And here for the RMS, I'm going to use <coughs> First, we're going to update the SK, which is the momentum, okay? Uh, S square, which is gradient square, squared of the gradient equals to gradient for each coordinate uh, to, the <coughs> to the square, okay? Then update the momentum for each coordinate using this for loop, okay? Second for loop, I'm going to create a new solution because this is update per coordinate. So for each coordinate of x, <coughs> we're going to calculate the alpha equal to step size. Okay, step size, which is the, let's see, here is the new right, uh, file right here. Um, I'm going to be using alpha a time uh, equal to the step size divided by uh, the epsilon plus the square root of uh, gradient squared. Okay, at uh, the moment, uh, moment, moment basically accumulate or exponential smoothed uh, square root of a gradient. Then I'm going to use the Previous uh, current solution uh, minus alpha times the gradient as part of a uh, part of the update. So alpha is the step size, like I said. And we're going to using put it all together into a so-called new solution vector. So since this is for each coordinate, so I'm going to append each value into that new solution vector. So after this loop is done, we we exhausted all the coordinate for x, and each one of the coordinates I have a new value, which is potentially the new x solution. After we're done with all the coordinates, 
then I have a new solution. Okay, I convert that new solution into a NumPy array, put it into the new solution. Okay, calculate the objective function of the new solution, and therefore I have a score, which is objective function. And here I illustrate only two dimension. Okay. If uh, objective function is uh, multi-dimension, you just put in solution right here. <clears throat> then I'm going to print the uh, number of iteration, IT. Okay, uh, IT is right here, the number of iteration. Maximum could be 500 or 1,000. And solution, which is the new solution. And the score is the uh, <coughs> current objective function. Again, I'm testing for the convergences. <clears throat> if the old score minus the new, sc uh, uh, new score, is, uh, their absolute value is less than 10 to the minus 5, and then we print out uh, uh, a notice, say L convergence criteria satisfied, and print out a solution and a score. Otherwise, I'm going to store the new score into the old score, and then now we go to the next iteration. Finally, if we didn't satisfy any of the uh, satisfy the convergence criteria before the num uh, maximum number of allowed iteration, we can also return the current uh, solution. Okay, this is our main program. The main program that's very similar to the one we introduced in the Atom. Uh, updates and the gradient descent algorithm using Atom. Uh, here I have exactly the same and I'm using C equals to 1 and the bounds is between x for x bound equals to negative 1 to 2.5 for y equals to negative 1 to 2.5. So this is what I have for the Rosenblock function. Okay, we know the from the previous example, the Rosenbach function minimizes at the 1, 1, 1, 1, whatever, and then the objective function equal to 0. Okay? So I set a maximum number of iteration equals to 500, step size 0 0.01, and the momentum for the uh, RMS prop is 0.75, and again, I'm using the starting timer and the ending timer and print out the uh, execution time for the subroutine solving the problem. Okay. After I run for this, uh, it takes about, uh, what, 68 iteration. And uh, look at the, <coughs> uh, Solution we got is 0 0.99, 0 0.998, 0 0.997, and practically this is zero. So only take a 60A uh, iteration to solve this function. In terms of number of iterations, it's much faster than the Atom uh, updates. And also look at the execution time. It's about hundreds of a second, okay, uh, 1.2 millisecond basically. And so this is also four or five times faster than uh, the Adam algorithm. Uh, so I just want you to know an Adam algorithm sometimes is very sensitive to uh, the parameter, the uh, beta 1, beta 2, and the step size you're using. Uh, RMS is less sensitive because it only have two, two different uh, parameters to tune. One is the so-called momentum uh, exponential smoothing factor. So we'll, call it, we'll call it rho. Basically, it's the gamma. And step size we have right here is the alpha. Alpha is the default step size. So if we keep the step size small, the convergence is pretty uniform. 
Uh, if we're using a, a larger step size, and this solution will be zigzagging. So it depends on how well conditioned your objective function is. And if you have <clears throat> multiple local minima in your function, using a large step size may be helping a little bit for you to jump out if the current local minima. But for smooth function like a <clears throat> Rosenberg function, Actually, we don't need the whole uh, very large uh, step size in that case. Again, the step size is <clears throat> how you update. This is the step size you're using to update your new solution with respect to the uh, current gradient G. So this is a very <clears throat> uh, straightforward alg uh, algorithm you're basically using your gradient as your direct improving direction, and then you calculate the step size using the momentum, uh, exponentially decayed momentum update. So, <clears throat> let's quickly uh, give you a uh, overview of how RMS is uh, executed. Um, again, the rest of the notebook I have for uh, you for machine learning purpose and same thing we're using uh, <clears throat> uh, this function called uh, f of x equal to 0.1 x1 square 2 times x2 square to potentially create certain type of ill condition for you to uh, to exercise but it's still the same we can RMS function actually <clears throat> can converge to uh, optimal or very close to optimal with a high precision very fast. This is the reason I want to introduce these two algorithms first. The Atom software was default is currently default for uh, TensorFlow, which is a Google version of uh, uh, neural network learning platform, and many people has been testing this algorithm and claim it is the most efficient algorithm. However, the RMS prop is using primarily in for uh, the Facebook version of the uh, neural network platform called PyTorch. And both of them can be performed very well. So I just want to show you it with this very popular Rosenbrook function, actually the RMS prop uh, outperforms the Adams, of, uh, Adams algorithm uh, by a couple uh, times faster. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to quickly uh, uh, conclude this video. Of course, uh, Adams algorithm, can, you can fine tune the uh, 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 algorithm, uh, sorry, the parameters and the step size, the uh, exponential decay factors, uh, beta 1, beta 2, to improve uh, <clears throat> uh, fine tune it for each one of the objective function. However, by default objective function looks like an, in this test function, an RMS prop is a little bit uh, more efficient. And we also going to uh, start uh, <clears throat> showing you uh, two other method in the next two video. One is the so-called uh, Nesterval, uh, nest of uh, momentum, and uh, uh, add a delta uh, algorithm to compare their performance to these two. So I will see you in the next lecture video. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.